Right. Let's go. OK, so welcome, everyone. Welcome to the February uh, NHSR webinar. It's a very exciting webinar today. Uh, we're joined with Colin Fay from ThinkR. Colin Fay, for those of you for the uninitiated, is uh, one of the sort of uh, what I call one of the foremost experts in the world on productionizing Shiny. And he's going to be talking about building multiple paid Shiny apps with brochure, um, which I haven't had a go at myself actually yet. So I'll be very interested to hear that myself. Um, so just before we kick off the talk, I just want to just quickly just introduce you all to NHSR. So we're a, a community of people uh, who use um, R and to a lesser extent other languages like Python in UK health and social care. Uh, we run training courses regularly and we have a lot of community uh, events. We have a Slack. Um, we have uh, a book club. We do um, fund um, solutions to, to common problems in healthcare. Um, so do get in touch. Um, find us on Twitter. Find us on um, find us on the internet. Uh, I'm sure we'll post links to all of that in the chat in due course. Um, so today is being recorded. It will be available on YouTube. I'm sure Colin will be able to share his slides for you later as well. Um, and we'll be taking questions throughout. So just type them in the Q&A. There's a Q&A box. I can see the Q&A box. Colin won't be able to when he's presenting. And we'll um, we'll come back to all the questions at the end. Uh, if you think of questions afterwards, then do um, just give us a shout on Twitter or on Slack, uh, and I'm sure we can pass them on to Colin. I'm sure he'll be happy to to uh, answer them for you. Uh, and at the end as well, we're going to use Mentimeter just to gather some feedback about the webinar. Um, so look out for that later on, and please let us know what you what you think. Um, right. So without further ado, I will now hand you over to uh, Colin Fay from Thinkar, who will be talking about multiple page shiny apps with brochure. So Colin, please. Uh, Please, uh, sure. Choice. Are are people getting in? Because I can see only three people in. Oh, I think no. That's 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 us. Okay. Sure. Um, there'll be another. There'll be like a public version of it with uh, oh. uh, everyone, where everyone else is. <laughs> okay, so let me share. I'm waiting for. Microsoft team to load. OK, great. OK, so can you see the slides? Yep, all good. OK, perfect. OK, great. Let me move this here. OK, great. So um, hello, everyone. So my name is um, Colin Fay, um, I'm here to talk today about um, a new package I've been working on for, um, I think, a couple of months now, which is called Brochure and which is designed to build um, uh, natively multi page Shiny apps. So, just a little bit about me. So, I work in a company called Thinkar, uh, I do everything around uh, data science engineering. Um, I do a lot of uh, open source projects. Uh, I'm the lead developer for um, a package called Golem, which is a package for building um, production grade Shiny app. So it's a tool for helping you build Shiny application that are designed uh, for production. And I'm the main author of a book called Engineering Production Grade Shiny Apps. So you can find me online um, on the uh, R task. Um, blog or on Twitter, GitHub, and there is my personal website here. So if ever you want to reach out, uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, on Twitter. Um, I'm always happy to answer questions or to help you uh, work with either Golem or Shiny or any other, uh, other packages I am uh, working on. So just a little bit about uh, Thinkar. So we are uh, based in France. Um, we do everything around um, data science engineering, uh, we are focused on R. Um, what we do um, is around half half training and um, consulting. So um, what's under the umbrella of consulting is uh, engineering uh, applications. So mainly building uh, shiny applications, but we do also a bunch of um, uh, API, uh, REST API or things like that. So we also help to put R in um, production. That is to say that if you have, I don't know, a proof of concept for a Shiny app or for um, an API or for a model or for something you want to uh, send to production, um, 
we come and we try to uh, make your proof of concept ready for production. So we help you um, do that. We also do uh, everything uh, around installation of uh, our Studio products. So connect uh, our Studio server, uh, things like that. Or if you want to uh, do things with containers, so Docker and stuff like that, uh, we work on that. Um, and the other half of um, our, what we do is um, training. So basically we help people um, that are getting started with R or people that are uh, already working with R, but they want to get better with something. I don't know, they want to learn how to build packages. Um, they want to learn how to build Shiny apps. They want to learn R6. Uh, they want to learn things like that. So we, it's a part of um, uh, our job. And basically, one of the thing about training now is that we do everything remotely. And um, so since uh, COVID and basically um, one of the tools we are now using for training. So it's an online platform and um, it's a web application which is not built in R. So it's built in uh, Node.js and it's something that has helped me a lot rethink uh, how to build web apps and to rethink about how we build shiny apps and that inspired um, what is no uh, brochure. Okay, so today we are here to talk about um, a package called brochure. Uh, it's a package for um, building multi-page uh, shiny apps, but uh, things that are uh, shiny apps that are natively uh, multi-page. So I'm gonna uh, uh, talk about two of the uh, packages that already exist for um, simulating multi-pages in Shiny apps, but they are not really um, natively multi-page. It's more of a hack of the way uh, URL work and stuff like that. So yeah, my, my goal today is to talk about um, this package called brochure, so it's still a work in progress, uh, so I'm still working on it, but um, I'm fairly happy about the API right now. So it's still a work in progress, but it's pretty much stable right now. And I hope that in the upcoming weeks, I'll be able to uh, release a first version, such so as to have um, to be able to work with uh, this. And I think, yeah, the API, the API right now is pretty much stable and I'm pretty happy with it. So. I'm going to present it uh, today, but yeah, if you want to try it, it's available on my GitHub um, repository. So at Colin Fay slash brochure, and you can install it uh, the, just like any other package from, um, from GitHub. So first of all, um, I know what you might be thinking and what most people are thinking when you tell them that you have a new package around Shiny is, basically that you have built yet another shiny uh, extension. So you're just rolling your eyes and saying, yeah, not again, not yet another shiny extension. But there is like, let me let me explain why, um, why I've decided to work on this uh, project. Because yeah, there is a, a rational explanation. It's not yet another shiny extension. So there is like a whole history about uh, why this package. So if you think about the web and how it works uh, today and how you are using it and the things you see on the web is that there are basically um, two types of uh, web application. Traditionally, um, there is what is called a multi-page uh, web application, uh, basically. Um, if like me, you have, heard, you have learned uh, HTML like 15 years ago, uh, what you did was writing a series of files that are served uh, via a web server. So you write one page, so you have got your home, you've got your contact page, you've got your, I don't know, shop, you've got your, I don't know, results, analytics, etc. So you have a series of pages and basically when you move from one page to the other, what your browser is doing is that it is requesting a new page uh, on the server. So your browser asks the web server for a resource and the um, server sends the resource back. 
For web page, most of the time, traditionally, it was an HTML page. So basically, you, you do a request with server and the server sends uh, some HTML back and the browser uh, is in charge of building your web uh, page. This is how most websites work today. Uh, so every time you move from one page to the other, everything is reloaded and you have something fresh every time you move from one page um, to the other. And this is basically how you would learn how to build an application if you are taking a course on Node.js or on, I don't know, on Ruby or uh, a standard something with HTML, PHP and stuff like that. It's how you'd think about building your app. And this is uh, when I uh, designed the uh, platform, which is now used for um, serving our online courses. Uh, so this is the way um, it has been uh, built. So you have your home, you have slash login. Uh, then once you are login, you are taken to something called session, etc., etc. You are defining a series of endpoints, so this is uh, this is what happens when my bro my browser is requesting the uh, slash or when it's requesting slash session. This is what I'll be doing whenever I receive this kind of request. So this is how most websites are working today. How you are going to learn how to build them with other languages. Um, Basically, you have these um, multi pages. So it's really a new request every time you move from one endpoint to the other. And there is another um, more modern way to build apps. So this is something that uh, has emerged um, in like last years. It's building something which is called a single page app, which is uh, how Shiny works. So how it works is that when you are, when your browser uh, is going to your website, something called yourwebsite.com slash, uh, it does a single request um, to the server and the server sends a bunch of HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And every time you want to uh, do something, um, to do something with the app, when the user uh, is clicking or is doing some request, you, send a JavaScript request to the server, the server uh, answers you and you update the page in uh, real time. So this is how Shiny works today. Uh, when you open your Shiny app in your browser, the browser do um, a couple of requests to the server, uh, the, the server sends back an HTML and then it connects what is called a WebSocket and basically you are exchanging information between R and um, your browser. So what's wrong with uh, what's wrong with that? Um, with the way that Shiny works, what's wrong with um, with this idea of having a single page app and doing a bunch of requests to update the uh, content? So uh, really, there is like nothing wrong uh, with that. But uh, so when I designed this um, this web platform for teaching. Um, you know, I just realized how it was uh, built and what I needed and what I could do and what I really needed to do um, on this, uh, this web app. So I try to think about uh, going like outside of box, just uh, taking a step back on Shiny and uh, like, what do I need when I build a web app? Why do I, um, what do I need? So if I try to list all the thing I um, might need, so first of all, um, as far as I can tell, I need something with multiple paths, something which is which are real, real uh, multiple paths. Because, um, for example, something that has been bugging me with Shiny is basically that if you have like a dashboard with uh, multiple tabs and you want to show tab number five. Uh, you are going to say to your clients, just open the app, go there and click there and tell me if it works. Because you can't really natively refer to this uh, this tab. And even 
if you like tweak the, the URL a little bit with uh, what is called URL fragments, um, you can still show the, the tab, but every time you do that, you still have to load um, a lot of things. Uh, and most of the time for with Shiny, you are basically just loading and hiding things. So you are loading the whole page and you are hiding stuff and you are, I don't, I don't know, just like loading things that might not be uh, necessary. You, you don't want to um, do that all the time. Um, something else um, which like every website on the web is doing is um, a way to um, a way to use cookies. So cookies are things that are put inside your browser just so that you are um, so that your browser knows who you are um, when you come back to the app. Uh, I'm going to show at the end an example of um, how we have been uh, using it for uh, one of our courses and one of uh, our workshop on Shiny. But basically, if you open uh, your uh, Twitter account or um, any other websites uh, you connect one time and when you come back to your application it knows who you are you don't have to uh, log every time you open um, the app this is something uh, that i think is uh, really needed um, because if you implement uh, some kind of uh, logging uh, mechanism in your app or if you are uh, I don't know, showing stuff uh, the first time people are, are coming, but you do want to uh, show them after that. Um, this is something you can do with cookies and cookies. So there is way, there are ways to do it with JavaScript, but most of the time the uh, secure way to um, to set cookies inside your browser is uh, via HTTP uh, cookies. But this is not something you can do uh, with Shiny because basically you have one HTTP connection the first time and uh, this first uh, connection can't set uh, cookies and um, when you navigate to the app you don't do any other HTTP requests so you can't set uh, cookies at that, at, uh, at that moment. So cookies uh, which is something um, you'll need if you are building a large uh, app. Uh, for example if you are something you could do is uh, restoring uh, stuff in the app. So um, for example, if you are uh, your Shiny app and you, you are doing things and basically if you are reloading, uh, I don't know, if you are uploading a CSV and you click refresh on your uh, browser, you just have to redo uh, redo it one more time. But if you are setting cookies, you can identify who the people is, uh, who the person is, and you can reload uh, the things that they have been uh, using uh, before. So it's something that I, I think has been uh, missing uh, in Shiny. Uh, there is, of course, like a standard uh, support for um, HTTP uh, methods. So uh, how, how it works is um, when you are doing, uh, you are exchanging information via uh, HTTP, and you can use different uh, methods. So the most uh, known is GET. So you are getting something from the server. But there are other, um, other HTTP things uh, you would uh, want to do, which is basically post, put, delete, uh, patch. There are a bunch of HTTP uh, methods that you'd want to use. Uh, something to tweak HTTP code, so 200, 300, 400. So these are um, a series of uh, numerical um, numeric codes that are sent by the server just to um, to give to the browser information about the state of the um, server. So this is something that you do like in any other um, application, for example, with a uh, Node.js, uh, you'd be able to define um, all these uh, things uh, natively. So this, this would be the way you'd build a, a shiny, um, an application with Node.js. Something, for example, as simple as um, having something to log. So when you log on um, on a website, you enter your password and your username and the browser posts uh, these information on the server. The server sends a response back, sets a cookie in your browser 
and then it reloads the page and it says uh, it's okay you logged in uh, your that specific user so it's something that so this is something yeah that have been missing from uh, shiny because um, the reason why um, you'd want to um, do that um, for example, I had uh, another question on Twitter the other day about how to, how could I serve uh, a landing page on uh, Shiny? So uh, how could I, uh, how can I make a landing page? So landing page is um, like um, a standard web page where people are going to land when they are uh, moving to your website and it's a way to redirect to a uh, other page in your app. So this is um, this is something that can be done with a specific endpoint. So you say on that endpoint, serve this uh, HTML content. So you don't have to build um, something in Shiny. Um, you'd want to do that because you'd want to be able to point to specific parts of uh, the app. So this is what I um, I said before about um, just telling open the app, click there, click there, click there, and see. Um, it would allow also to uh, lower the load on the server by serving uh, yes, st static uh, HTML elements or um, basically just being able to, if you have a large, um, a large app, just being able to serve one page. So if you think about, I don't know, Shiny Dashboard, um, just being able to serve this uh, tab, uh, you just load this tab, you don't have to, to think about the rest of the application, the rest of the observe event, the, uh, the rest of the reactive values and stuff. You just have to think about this page because you know that when the user uh, is going to open this page, it's just gonna uh, be loading this page. Something as simple as uh, monitoring your app via an elf check. So um, if you have an app that runs in production, maybe you, uh, you'd you want um, something which which is done a lot like in, in other application which is slash elf check and you have something that runs uh, in real time that just does a series of checks um, on a regular basis just to be sure that the app is still running if you want to um yeah you want you'd want to identify the user when they come back to the app so if you do things like I don't know if you use a Shiny Manager, for example, uh, to implement um, a logging mechanism with username and password. Uh, you don't want them to uh, re-log every time they connect to the app. So there would be a way to, uh, to do that, uh, setting uh, cookies. Uh, for example, if you think about when you are doing some online shopping and uh, you come back and your cart is still there, so you still have the things that you have um, ordered, um, even when you close your browser. So this is, these are the kind of things that I'd love to uh, be, uh, be able to do. Um, if you want to post elements to a server, so just to add real HTTP uh, method support, uh, you might want to add a 404 page for um, unreachable pages. So if you go to an endpoint that doesn't exist, you usually have something called 404, so which is a server, which is like uh, you're looking for content that doesn't exist. You might also want to be able to redirect from um, an element to the other. Uh, for example, if you decide that you have slash um, my shop and then you want to rename it slash shop. Uh, so you want this um, old endpoint to um, to re redirect to uh, another. So this is something uh, very standard in um, very standard in a way you'd build uh, a, a classical web uh, website. So thinking about that, about all the things that I um, I needed when I built this application for training, um, I decided that to explore what existed uh, at that point uh, to build. Um, multiple uh, multi-page shiny apps so um, I, th I thought about all the things that i needed when building a web app and i tried to look for um, all the projects so there are as far as i know two uh, projects two projects about um, this which is blaze and uh, shiny router so my 
when I looked uh, at them, so it works uh, for what uh, they are intended to do, but they are not um, they are not real uh, multi-page uh, apps. They kind of hack your browser path by using URL fragments. Um, a fragment is something that you'd use uh, with like an hashtag and uh, a piece of text. Um, that uh, that is used uh, generally and traditionally in the web to uh, refer to a specific page to a specific point uh, inside your page so a specific location not a page so just a location inside uh, the page usually they are used to for example if you um, if you have a book down and you want to refer to a specific uh, title inside one page of your book down you can use uh, you can click and you have the uh, chapter with uh, a fragment for this uh, specific location. So they create uh, history in your browser, so you can go to uh, back and forth um, with fragments, but uh, they don't reload the full page. So with these two solutions, you'll still have to load the full Shiny app and just hide things. Um, so you're not really doing uh, multi-page. Um, <coughs> sorry. And another thing is that URL fragments they are not sent as part of the HTTP request. Um, so it can be harder to log what's happening in the app. Because um, what you do on a standard um, app, if you have something uh, that you want to um, debug, you can add log that says I'm on this page, on this page, etc. And you have the um, error. Um, but with uh, these um, with these solution, you don't have um, you don't have access to uh, this fragment um, with the HTTP request. And of course, um, as they are not uh, really multi-page uh, solution, they don't allow all the features that um, I've said before. So, uh, for for page. Um, Something like uh, being able to add post support, put and delete, uh, all these uh, things that I've listed here and here. Uh, as far as I know, they um, they're not able to uh, to do that. So this is why I um, decided to um, explore um, what I could do. I, I decided to see if I could uh, make a shiny extension, something on top of shiny that would behave. Um, with all that would have all the features that I've listed before and that will create a real uh, multi page application. So, this is where uh, brochure um, comes in. Um, this is um, one thing that I want to also is to uh, stay as close as possible to uh, standard um, shiny apps. So you don't have to relearn. Uh, all the things, <coughs> but a standard, um, a basic brochure app um, would be a call to brochure app. So this is uh, just like a call to a shiny app, and inside this brochure app, you'll have a series of uh, pages. So inside each pages, you'll have. So this is the location. So uh, this is the. Uh, way when you are building uh, apps to refer to the endpoint. So that says that on the um, home on slash, you'll have a plot with uh, a plot of iris. And on page two, you'll just have uh, this. So you'll just have a title. Uh, the idea here is that if ever I'm loading the first page, I don't have to think about all the things that happen in uh, the other page because basically this is uh, a standalone uh, shiny session. So it's really like the server from page two is never loaded when you are on page uh, one on the first page. So uh, just before I present you the um, some of the things that you can do with a brochure, just a little bit uh, about um, how HTTP works. Uh, basically, you have your browser. 
and your browser say, can I get uh, hello? Uh, is my full request? So I want to get hello. Uh, you have user agents, the host, the encoding. You have a series of stuff. Uh, you can uh, send the cookies. You can send uh, all the things. So your browser says, I want to get this resource. And here are the uh, series of um, parameters, so uh, elements, headers, things like that. You send this request, this um, request. So this is the uh, request, and the server receives it, it reads it, and it sends a response. For example, you have something that says 200. OK, I have uh, read your request and this is what you are looking for. So this is what uh, the slash hello resource contain. You'll have the HTML uh, content. So the browser sends a request and you receive a response. So this request and responses are not, you, you can't tweak them when you are working with Shiny uh, by default. So it's not something that's uh, easily doable. Um, but that would be something that you'd want to do uh, if you are building larger uh, apps. For example, it's a here is a simple uh, example of um, uh, a function uh, that you can uh, run between um, so it handles the request before it's processed by the server. So the browser sends its requests and you can put a series of functions here between, um, between the, the browser and between the way the server will uh, answer them. And same uh, the other ways of the uh, response handler. So before the server sends it to the browser, you can run a series of R functions. For example, here is a simple function to log uh, where you are. So every time your browser requests something to uh, Shiny uh, via uh, HTTP, it will log uh, where you are. Cookies also, so uh, setting the cookies via uh, response handler. So if you are on the login page, you'll send um, some HTML content, and basically uh, you'd send set a cookie uh, inside the response. So the browser sends its request, the server treats it, and before it sends the request back to the browser, you set a cookie. So here is a brochure cookie uh, with the value 12, but it's a way to identify the user. Uh, once it's in the browser, you can reload, you can refresh your application as many times as you want, uh, you'd still have this cookie inside your browser. Something also um, which is very um, easy to implement uh, <coughs> inside brochure is um, an elf check. So for example, you have um, something called check, uh, which doesn't have any UI uh, because you don't have to define like uh, something on the front. And it, this uh, request handler, um, it will just send back an HTTP response with 200 with OK. So it's just a way to um, have something that runs on your server and that, um, so for example, I don't know, every 30 seconds, just run this, um, try to get these resources. And if at some point you don't get it, send me a Slack message or send me something. So it's a way to be sure that your uh, application is always running. Um, because for example, with um, something for a training, you have online uh, exercises. Uh, I'll, show, um, I'll show one just after that. But you want to be sure that your user can access them uh, whenever they want. So just having something that checks every 30 seconds that the Shiny app is still running and that you can still reach the, the application. OK, so just a quick demo about um, an application which has been built with a brochure. So we have, um, we have for our training um, 
uh, workshop on uh, Shiny. Uh, so the idea is uh, for our training with Shiny, you start with a small app and as we go uh, through the um, as we go through the, the uh, training, the uh, application is getting um, more and more complex. Um, so basically, my idea was to build a web app with, where you have a list of all the chapters and the exercise which is linked with uh, this chapter. And um, if I had wanted to build it with uh, natively with Shiny, I would have it would have been hard to um, find a way to to yeah to build it easily because um, it's the same app and depending on um, I don't know how exactly how I would have done that maybe I've done I would have I've done 15 different apps or maybe I don't know I I'm, I really don't know how I would have approached this idea without brochure but uh, if you go so you open the um, you open the, um, the app, so it's a Shiny app running. You can go to the uh, first uh, exercise. And something that I wanted also is, um, so sorry, it's in French, um, but it's to have a quiz on every, uh, every exercise. So basically people come and they can answer a quiz that just tests if they have understood um, uh, the course. Um, so basically they open, they have a quiz, but one of the um, idea here was also that um, they, they don't, it was impossible to think of an application where they just have to answer the question every time they refresh the page. So if you close your browser and you come back, you still have to answer to this uh, quiz and just like um, do it again and again every time you refresh uh, the page. So this is something that can be done by setting a cookie uh, inside your browser. So if I um, if I answer correctly the um, the question, a cookie is set inside the browser, and if I refresh the page or if I close my browser and opens this uh, again, I don't have a quiz that pops up again. So this is something that you need with um, that you need with um, a standard application just to be sure that like you know that that person has already answered uh, the question. So yeah, the idea was to have these um, these elements, these uh, smaller shiny apps that are um, served on each page. So as you can see, there is O two O three. 04, etc., etc. So every time you go to your browser and you change the number, it does a new request to uh, the server and it serves this specific application. And the cool thing is that I don't have to, um, in a sense, think about the application as a whole because uh, every page is a shiny app in itself. So I just have to think about, <coughs> sorry, about my first page so it works and then I can think about the um, second page and at the same time so one other, other way to do that would have been to build I don't know 15 shiny apps but it's it makes it harder to share elements from one page to the other but here I can have uh, so I have my pages and inside my pages I have some shiny modules that are shared between all the pages. Um, so this is something I um, I wanted uh, to do here with uh, for this. I so I also have um, something that only serves uh, HTML. Uh, so basically, here uh, there is no reason for loading a like a full uh, shiny uh, server and stuff. It's just like serving. Uh, uh, serving HTML content. And of course, as it's uh, a workshop that people can do whenever they want, um, I wanted to have um, an elf check. So basically, um, whenever um, this is in production, I can have a cron uh, job, so a job that runs uh, every 
Um, I don't know, I prefer to second just to check that this is still available. I also have a small function called log where that um, logs where uh, the user is. Um, and whenever you set a cookie, it logs that it has set uh, the cookie. So it, could, it can be a way to also um, debug uh, easily where um, things are happening. So you know that if you have a bug in your logs, it's, it's on this uh, page. So yeah, I don't have in this um, application an, an example of adding a post uh, request to the server, but this is yeah, something that you can do also. And all um, and a bunch of uh, other things that you can find um, in a standard uh, web app. So yeah, as you can see, there is uh, one module um, by uh, page, and um, of course it's um, uh, brochure has been um, there is a, a good compatibility between column and brochure. Uh, there is inside the uh, brochure um, and check the example on the um, the readme so if you are uh, if you want to build to start uh, building a brochure app with golem there is an example on the um, uh, readme check so ah, where am i okay so there is um, a project hook inside uh, brochure. So um, project hooks are a new feature uh, in Golem where whenever you create a Golem is a function which is launched just after the project creation. So the idea is that when you run this function, so from the command line or uh, from um, the RCU IDE, you'd get uh, this function and you'd get all the um, um, all the elements set up for uh, building your um, building your app with brochure and of course there is also a module uh, template for brochure so whenever you do call them add module and you pass the uh, brochure new page function um, as a module template you'll have a new page uh, for your brochure, <coughs> for your brochure app. Okay, so that was it for uh, the demo. Um, so yeah, just a small um, auto promotion for uh, the engineering shiny book. So if you are um, looking for, um, if you want to learn about how to build a production grade. Shiny app. So we have a book, engineeringshiny.org, which is available uh, online or that you can get uh, in print. So uh, feel free to uh, have a look at it. We've been um, putting a lot of uh, knowledge that we've built um, through the years around uh, Shiny in production. And of course, uh, you can reach out uh, by, you can send me an email or it might be easier to reach out uh, on Twitter. I'm, I'll be, I might be uh, quicker to respond uh, to answer on Twitter than via mail. So feel free to uh, reach out. Uh, I'll be happy to uh, help. Okay, so and I'll take the question now, if there are any. Great, thanks very much, Colin. I just like to echo the plug for the book. If you're doing production grade shiny apps, I highly recommend that you read it because. Um, <laughs> Totally changed my whole shiny workflow, to be honest. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be without it. Um, <laughs> right, so we've got a few questions. Um, so the first question is, how would you go about con converting an existing shiny app to brochure? Yeah, so it depends. Uh, it depends on uh, if it has been built with Golem or with um, with shine, a shiny, a uh, standard shiny app. Um, Basically, uh, there is also a small workflow. If you are, if you want to adapt uh, your old application to brochure, but basically the idea is to uh, switch your uh, Shiny app call inside uh, Run app to a brochure app, and inside where where you've got your uh, module. So, for example, if you take a page. 
you do here a function that returns a page with a UI and a server. And here it would be the uh, call to your Shiny modules. So basically, if you just have one page, you can, um, let me check where is the simple example. So if you have just one page inside your Shiny app, you can take your UI, put it there and your server and put it there and it will work. So in, inside something as, uh, as simple as that. But if you have like something with a uh, module and stuff, um, you'd put, you'd create functions like this. And the UI is the um, uh, module UI and the server is the server uh, function. If I, okay, let me check my, uh, my race. Um, so I've start a small um, application with brochure. So I, I also do uh, Twitch sessions, and the idea here is to build a function, uh, to build an app with um, brochure. But the default, um, the, de the default brochure modules they look like this. So most of the time you don't have to. Uh, change this, so it's the elevation, uh, so it returns the page with the href and the id, and basically this is like a standard shiny module, so the only things that uh, changes is this uh, little part here. So yeah, the best way would be to create these function that returns page objects, and then you list all these function inside uh, run app. Cool. Thanks very much. Um, yeah. Another question is. Um, uh, so it's given that this is a more traditional way of building web applications, can you recommend sort of documentation around um, some of these concepts for those of us who are not familiar? And I'd actually like to expand that question slightly myself, actually, um, because I've long thought like shiny programmers are a kind of weird mix of kind of web programming and R programming, and I'm never quite sure what, what you know which side you should lean on like do you think it's really possible to just use r and be a really good shiny program or what what point do you obviously you built a lot of great functionality into here but how familiar do we have to be with the world of the web do you think to be effective yeah i think one of the um one of the funny thing about shiny developers is that shiny developers are web developers but don't want to learn about the web you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> because uh, basically, of course, if you are just doing a small proof of concept, uh, it will like work. But if at some point you are building something for production, something that people will rely on, something which is large, something which which will be sent on server, serve to people and stuff, uh, you are building a web app. So at some point, it's I think it makes sense to learn web technologies. So learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and how, what is like what is an HTTP request? What is a what is a cookie? What are these elements? So I think that yeah, shiny developers. You if you are a shiny developer, you are building a web app. So it's if you want to like be better with shiny at some point, you are yeah, you'll you'll need to learn these uh, technologies because but yeah, they have been like doing an awesome work, um, like the shiny team. Um, like around making all this thing like transparent, so you don't have to think about what is an HTML, what is a port, what is a cookie, what is an HTTP request. So it's basically just magic, but with like any magic trick at some point, there is a, a catch uh, along the way. So yeah, I, th I think that if, if your goal is to to be a great uh, shiny developers, you are going to be a great web developers, web developer. So it makes sense to learn uh, web technologies. And when it comes to when it comes to um, resources, so I usually uh, advise uh, free code comp. Oh, Colin's either Colin's froze or I froze. I don't know what's happened. I can't hear anything.
So I think we've lost um, Colin. Yeah, we just lost him. Oh dear, how annoying. <laughs> uh, well, let's just wait a minute or two to see if he comes back. Sorry about this, everyone. Uh, do put any more questions in the chat. Oh, yeah, here he is. Is he muted? I think it does. I think it also mutes you on the way in, actually, but I think you can unmute. I think you can probably unmute yourself now, Colin. We just lost you for a moment there. Oh dear, we've got a few more questions coming. I'll just do that while we wait. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so he's trying to. Microsoft Teams keeps crashing. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> God bless Microsoft. Yes, people are raving. Oh, I'll publish it. Yeah, I'll just publish this. Um, yes, people are raving about Golem in the questions, which I yes, I quite agree. It's it's invaluable, really, in my opinion. Someone's asking, I'm just going to try and feel the questions. I mean, I'm, you know, have nowhere near the noise of Colin does, obviously, but uh, oh, here he, go, here he is. I think the brochure functionality Golem, I think, I'm not sure. Yeah, let's have a look at the, the release schedule. I don't think it was the 3.0. Hey. Oh, is he back? <laughs> Sorry, just Microsoft Teams just crashed two times in a row. So. Yeah. <laughs> God bless Microsoft. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, sorry, yes, you were saying about um, learning um, yeah. HTTV and cookies and all that stuff. Uh, I, I usually like, uh, can I put it in the chat? So it's it, there is a website called Free Code Camp, and they got a bunch of um, they got a bunch of courses around HTTP, CSS, JavaScript. So there is this uh, Free Code Camp. And also w3schools.com, uh, which has a series of uh, like courses. Cool. Right. Sorry. I'll just uh, let me just pop that in the in the chat. I'm just trying to keep up with the chat. Uh, Great, yes. Uh, OK, so where? Let's have a look for another question. Uh, oh, yes, here's one. So is it possible to save a cookie for a page and then use that to, to set a filter on another page? Yeah, of course. So, so yeah, there, there are a bunch of um, so you can set uh, a cookie uh, on the page and as long as you are still on the same URL, it's available on another page. So yeah, it, it's an it's another way. Uh, usually, when you are uh, doing a web app, you are going to log. Uh, if you think about, um, I don't know, fa your Facebook feed, you log. It says it's me, and if you move to another page, it's going to filter the content with only the thing that you're allowed to see. So yeah, if if you set a cookie on one page, it's available on one one another, and I have a bunch of. Uh, functions inside brochure that are designed to pass uh, the cookies so you can access it from here. So yeah, it's definitely doable. Uh, yeah, it does sound really useful. I've often wanted to know kind of keep track of people, but without logging them in. And I'd always just assumed it was impossible and I'm just learning now, of course, that it is, which is, uh, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, so you, you, you have to be a little bit careful about with the old GDPR and stuff. Uh, because uh, you can set cookies, cookie without people knowing it as long as it's not used to uh, identify them as a person you know so if if you are if you want to track someone and say it's it's that person but um you, you don't know who it is just you just know that it was there before you can do that. yeah indeed yeah well i just wanted to kind of just to like you know oh last time you were here you were looking at this that kind of thing yeah 
So yeah, it's definitely doable. So it's, it's the idea. You can have something on brochure that says, uh, on every page you set a cookie that says, I don't know, last page or last filter. And every time you come back, you have, uh, last time you were there, you were on this page, or so you search for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, There's something cool. you have for, I don't know, uh, on Azure DevOps or stuff like that. So you have a filter and you type something in your filter and you come back and you still have this thing inside your filter. You know, so you have the inputs and then you come, you open the page for input are still there when yeah. you come back. So, I yeah, think my users would that, love that because some of my applications are very complicated and they can take quite a long time to get to where you want to be. And yeah. the idea that you could just shut it down and come back and it's just like, this is what you were doing would be amazing. Yeah, you can definitely do that. So of course you have to store somewhere uh, the input and stuff, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, someone's asking when did you add the when did you add the the Golem uh, brochure uh, functionality the brochure Golem functionality rather. Oh yeah, so the um, project hooks and the tom the module template for Golem have been released, I think, in June last year. But the brochure template it's just like a couple of weeks ago. So I've been working on this for I don't know three or four months, but just merged it in uh, in main like a couple of weeks ago. So it's pretty new, yeah. Cool. Okay, well I think we'll leave it there. I think we've got have we got a, a um, feedback thing coming up in the chat, maybe, or is it already there? Sorry, I'm getting, I'm drowning in chat, guys. <laughs> um, have you, have we got one, Charlotte, for the, for a Mentimeter? Oh yes, here it is. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. So as Colin says, so um, we'll, uh, I guess we'll maybe tweet out some of the some of his contact details or something later on. Um, sure. But um, he's pretty easy to track down on the internet. Um. So <laughs> do if you've got any other questions about brochure or Golem, um, then sure. do um, let him know. Come and visit the NHSR community. Thanks for attending today. Thanks very much to Colin for a very interesting talk. And uh, we'll see you all next time. Great. Okay. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.